Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. In 2012, researchers at the University of Saskatchewan began a pilot project called a collaborative approach to defining water security in the Saskatchewan River Basin. In an effort to capture a range of viewpoints, a survey was conducted with a variety of stakeholders, asking them to prioritize water management issues, their level of concern with the natural environment, and the open-ended question, what does water security mean to you? Following the survey, research workshops were held with the participants. Focus group discussions discussed topics such as governance, communication, competition for resources, as well as many other topics. Sorting statements about water security provided five distinct viewpoints about water security, including idealistic sustainability, pragmatic sustainability, reliability, social and ecological justice, and limited resources. Follow-up workshops were held with the survey participants to share res results with them, but they wanted something other than the conventional and passive death by PowerPoint. And thus, this play was created. So, with the support of the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada, the University of Saskatchewan Drama Department, and the Global Institute for Water Security, ladies and gentlemen, we present Downstream. This was supposed to be all set up. You mean no one set this up? We're setting it up. Didn't you read the email? Oh, I get so many from you guys, I sometimes just delete them. Especially when Dirk gets on a rant. He just needs to dominate everything. When Dirk gets on a what? A rant. Nothing. It's nothing. What are we doing here anyways? We're not scheduled to meet for another three weeks. All the info was in the email I sent out. Yeah, well, I saw that Rainbow chimed in about something. And I thought she was going to go on and on about some stupid moth habitat or something, getting bulldozed, now it's such a crime against nature, and blah, blah, You're blah. You're a crime against nature. Man. No, can it, you two? What are we doing here anyway? Don't any of you read the emails I send out? Well, of course I read your emails. Then check any factual errors you've made and send them back so that everyone knows what's really going on. Then I check the replies and correct them. Then why are we here? Something something drought plan. I only skimmed it. How come the table isn't set up? Don't you guys know how to do anything? If you had read the emails, you'd know that it's about the struggles to manage the drought. They've decided that it's time for a more um, distributed democracy. The river stewards, that's us, are going to be given some real power to make decisions. Oh, that's great. That's amazing. <laughs> this is for real? We finally have some real power to make decisions? Oh, we've been asking for it for like years, and it will help the community make better long-term decisions. I mean, come on already. Why now all of a sudden? I'm just holder of the memo. Franny, you're in government. Yeah, Franny, what's up? Well, just because I work for the government doesn't mean I speak for them. But in my personal opinion, and it's my opinion only, let's keep that clear, I'm pretty sure they simply don't know what to do and need to share the risks. Although they would probably say something like, the government is exercising its due diligence to ensure that any decisions about risk are made by a representative group of diverse stakeholders. But again, that is just my personal opinion, so please strike that from the minutes. In other words... In other words, this won't be easy. The river stewards, that's us, will provide the drought management plan that is to be implemented by the various levels of government. It will be up to each member of the committee to synthesize the voices of their respective stakeholder groups to ensure they are accounted for in the plan. The what in the what now? <laughs> we need to come up with a plan that considers everyone's concerns and needs and use that to draft a comprehensive plan that will make everyone happy. <laughs> okay. Come on, this isn't funny. I drafted an agenda and everything. Mm -hmm. Now let's get this thing started. Franny, Miss Fensitter, call to order. Uh, there's a nice way to say that. Please call this meeting to order. <gasps> Thank you, Bill. Wasn't hard, was it? Call to order, call to order, roll call. If you are here, please say present so the secretary can reflect it in the minutes. Stewardship Committee and Eco Network, Rainbow Rainwater. You know, I'm the secretary. I could just write down my own name. I obviously know I'm here. As a matter of procedure, I'd like everybody to say present. It's in our constitution. Present. <laughs> Irrigated Farm Collaborative, Know It All Cal. Present. Drinking water habitat and angler for angling, Bill Bossy Pants. You know, I called the meeting. Of course, I'm present. Mm. Stewardship committee, budget committee, 
Dirk Dollar Store. Present. <laughs> Hydropower producers in the River Basin, Harry Richwater. Well, does anyone know where Harry is? Well, he and I got into it after the last meeting. We were getting on fine, and then he started into me about how it would make more sense financially if hydropower downstream just paid us to stop watering our crops. He went on about how it makes so much more money than irrigation, and how irrigation for watering crops was the major user, which he called economically nuts. Needless to say, I shut him up the old-fashioned way. Don't tell me you dropped the old fit fur on him again. First in time, first in right spiel again. I most certainly did. First in time, first in right. Order, order. Well, now we know why Harry is away. Annette Carrier, lands and resource manager for the Delta Village. Well, that is her third absence in a row. What do we do? We pray to Mother Earth that she is safe. Or we can just call her on her cell phone. First Nations people have a different way of knowing the world. And maybe we haven't built sufficient trust. After what has gone on in the Delta and the terrible impacts on their traditional way of life, would any of you trust us? Well, truth is, she don't really need to be here. The Delta First Nation has a direct line of communication with the government. It's government to government negotiations between them and the feds or them and the province. Until this drought, we were just an advisory group. We had no teeth. Now that we might have a chance to influence something, maybe she would want to come back to the table. Look, her job takes her out on the land quite a bit. She could be taking a look around to see how the drought will affect them. Y'all let me get to the bottom of this. Annette and I go back quite a ways. <clears throat> I can find out where she's at and if she wants to come back and work with us. Is that fine with everyone else? Do we need a motion or something? No, we're just doing roll call. Then we're good to go. Good. Because I actually have something to report. Fine, fine. Moving on to reports. You are an eager beaver, Dirk. Why don't you start? Representative of the Stewardship Budget Committee, Dirk Dollar Store. Dirk would do fine. Uh, it's so dry out there, we've had to stop our fracking wells because the groundwater is dangerously low. We're losing thousands of dollars every day, and if it doesn't rain soon, we're in for it. Do you have anything to report that is to do with the Stewardship Budget oh. Committee? <laughs> Sorry, boss. Wrong hat. Uh, budget's gone down a bit since the open house, but we're still in a healthy position to put out the newsletter. We've got $20,370. That'll change by next month as membership fees come due next week. Thank you, Dirk. Yeah. Rainbow Rainwater, anything from the Environment Committee? Well, similar to Dirk, we've been really feeling this drought. Our organic tomato seeds are absolutely parched, and I hear Environment that... Environment Committee? The two are related. I think people are really hurting out there. We've got to do something about this drought management plan. What drought management plan? The one we were supposed to develop two years ago. The scientists have been warning us about severe climate change. We met with the scientists last week. Did they give you any news? Any rain on the horizon? Is climate change actually happening? Well, you know, I'm an educated person. But every time I meet with those people, I feel like I'm from another planet. This interdisciplinary water security thing is really complex. Or was it complicated? I'm not sure I know the difference. The meeting was so confusing, I clearly didn't speak the same language as those folks. They went on about security and uncertainty, and even uncertainty about the uncertainty. At times, it seems as though they didn't even understand one another. It went a little bit like this. There is this sociologist there, and he's like, Well, from a postmodern view, if the science isn't certain, it can't tell us anything about the world. We need to know what makes people think what they think instead. Then a political scientist pipes up and says, According to the political expediency view, if the science is uncertain, then we don't need to do anything yet. Clearly, we need more research. Cool. Then engineering prof says, Well, according to the engineers' views, clients cannot understand or take into account assessments of uncertainty. At which point, I was like, Who are you calling dumb? Then a statistician pipes up and says, Probability is the only way of making statements about uncertainties. Oh, no, it isn't. What about the fuzzy systems view? <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Fuzziness is confusing. <laughs> and I was like, well, how do we deal with uncertainties about knowledge itself? Is it a problem with the data or with the model structures? No, wait, don't answer that. Is this drought caused by climate change? Yes. yes. 
and no. You see, the climate is at a 30-year average and is indeed changing. And it is likely due to human influences. But extreme events like droughts or floods are difficult to separate from the natural variation. <laughs> So, did you actually learn anything from the scientists? Well, they predict that the basin will be more wet with punctuated dryness, but the models are still very uncertain. That's when I started to cry. <laughs> Understandable. Okay, everyone, the thing we're all here for, let's get started on this drought management plan. We shouldn't have to have a plan. Mother Nature knows what she's doing. Uh -huh. A plan could have helped. The farmers took the biggest hit last year. But it all turned out well enough. We don't need more regulations telling us what to do. Some of our fish species lost an entire year of spawning. And that hurt tourism like crazy. Fewer game fish plus algae blooms on the lakes, it was a disaster. Animals need to eat those fish. They need them to make it through the winter. Look, if the animals can't evolve fast enough, that's not my fault. From the man who'd sell the last bottle of water to the highest bidder instead of making sure everyone could drink. You know what? Now, let's not be so hostile here. There's enough for everyone if we manage it right. But there wasn't enough for everyone last year. That's the point. We need to know who takes the hit next time this happens. We have agreements in place. They need to be a little flexible is all. More government interference, you mean? If it's needed. Of course it's needed. There are people downstream who rely on that water. Then they should have bought it upstream. You want it, you pay for it. But what if it's not there? Water levels are getting harder to predict each year, and water allocations which have been granted are respected and not subject to cancellation. That's got to change. Look, this is Canada. We have plenty of water. There's a reasonable expectation that the amount of water required will be available most of the time with occasional small shortages. Let's not be so cocky. Our purpose here should be ensuring that water is available for all types of uses. If we learn to share, there will be good water quality and enough water to sustain all life. Which means more oversight. We need mechanisms in place so there is enough water of sufficient quality to meet present and future needs as well as assured long-term needs. That's a mouthful. No kidding. So what now? A break? Anyone got an iPad? I want to know the score of the game. I do. Yeah, me too. Go Riders. Well, forget the Riders. Go Eskies. Stan Peters, you idiots. What an amazing coincidence that all three teams are playing today. <laughs> Traffic is backed up on Highway 1. No one can get in or out of town as the creek breached its banks this afternoon. The mayor said he's prepared to declare a state of emergency. What did she just say? It's raining like crazy in the mountains. Worst we've ever seen. I don't believe it. I got pictures. That looks bad. So much rain. The annual amount of precipitation for this region fell in one day. And it's only June. People downstream are being told to prepare for the worst flooding in, well, ever. I suggest an amendment to the agenda. We look at our flood management plans. Yeah, yes, we really should. Yeah, okay, what plans? Oh, this is bad. What are we going to do? You better make up your minds fast. There's a lot of water coming. Indeed. What do we do when there's a flood? Stock up on essential supplies. All available at retail outlets at perfectly reasonable prices. Run for your lives! Embrace the deluge as Mother Nature's way of cleansing the land. Start filling sandbags and evacuating those in low-lying areas. Avoid panicking and listen for instructions from government agencies. But first get supplies. Run! Cleansing rain! Sandbags! Stop panicking! Ladies and gentlemen, I think they need some help. And you people here are the best to help them. It's called the Flood Management Challenge! The water is on its way. You, the audience, have to decide who gets flood protection. There are, however, a limited amount of resources. Now, each of the actors on stage is going to become a new character, based on a landscape, a resident, or a resource in the basin. So there are five decision makers located at the front of the room. Please stand and give everyone a wave. Thank you. Now, as the flood approaches, the decision makers have the responsibility of allocating a certain number of resources, ping pong balls, to protect these areas. The options for flood protection and the cost of said protection, the number of balls, will be posted on the screen behind me. 
you, the audience, can talk amongst yourselves as well as shout out to our decision makers to suggest where you think the resources should be allocated. But before you make your decision, you will hear an, a, an argument from each of the areas. At the end of each argument, you will have a limited amount of time to allocate your resources. So the flood is going to pass by several vulnerable areas. First up, we have the Irrigated Farm District. The Fish Habitat. A golf course. A city water and sewage treatment plant. A prairie town. An oil and gas field. And finally, the community of the River Delta. We will not hear from the Delta, but he will be affected in much the same way as the others if he takes on too much water or if the water that he takes on is contaminated. So, are there any questions? If there are no questions, then we are about to begin the Flood Management Challenge! Yeah! So, Irrigated Farm, you're up first. I know, I know. I'm usually begging for more water in normal times. But if we get too much water, a canal can blow out. Why are we farming in areas that need that much irrigation? Well, most farms in this area don't use irrigation. But for the 10% that do irrigate, I mean, the water's right there. It's flowing past us, lots of it. Not lots, not all the time. Lots today. But there you go, have some more. But then all the fertilizer that's in the water will get washed into the river. Ever heard of an algae bloom? It hurts me. Fish hurts me bad. They take up all the oxygen and leave nothing. Not to mention it's like living with the sun blocked out. We need the sun too. Look, yes, we need irrigation to increase reliability, productivity, quality and yield. But like Fish says, on land not used to a lot of rain, erosion is a major concern. The water treatment plant, back me up here. That puts a lot of extra strain on our drinking water, does it not? It does. Thank you. Plus, there's the food supply issue. You want to cut into that? So what do you grow anyways? Lots of crops. For instance? Well, this year we planted mostly canola. Canola? We live in Western Canada, mostly butter eaters here. No one eats canola. Well, we produce forage crops too. You can't have butter without alfalfa, hay, or corn. By watering them, we can produce a lot more. Well, I love corn. I could totally go for some right now. <laughs> so you got some we could buy? Nah, it's too early in the season. But I saw some in the store yesterday. Not from Canada, obviously. So aside from growing food we don't eat... I employ a lot of people. They'll be out of work. And I add a lot of extra cash to the local economy. Don't forget the fertilizer running off. Just don't. And the fields could take years to recover. Especially if I lose any topsoil. That just doesn't grow back. And the food may be for export, but that doesn't mean it's not important for our customers. Thank you, Irrigated Farm. Decision makers are trying to decide at this time if they should divert water onto agricultural land. The land is outfitted for irrigation and thus is considered high value agricultural land. If the decision is made to flood the irrigation district, compensation must be made to the farms affected by the flooding. If the decision is made to do nothing, it could be very costly for those living downstream. So, you have to choose between option A to divert water onto irrigated land and provide compensation for 50 balls, or option B, to do nothing and hope for the best for zero balls. <laughs> Please choose now. Here you are, irrigated farm. Thank you for your decision. You chose option A, to divert water onto a irrigated land and provide compensation. <laughs> so next up, we have fish in the river. It's a flood and you're a fish. What are you worried about? My gills don't work if there's too much sediment in the water. Plus, my breeding grounds will get wiped out. I need to make babies or my species will die out. In a free market, you fish have the freedom to generate the wealth needed to determine your own future, <laughs> if you're willing to work hard at it. I'm a fish. Oh, right. You're a resource. Sorry. That's right. 
I'm a resource. I'm needed for tourism, sport fishing, and there are people who still rely on me for food, so I think I'm pretty important. Yeah, but those darn environmental laws get in the way of development and wealth. We could use more of the river if we don't need to worry about a species that can't pull their own weight. I suggest you evolve, and fast. <laughs> legs and lungs, legs and lungs, legs and lungs. Damn it, I'm still a fish. <laughs> good water for fish is good for us. We can't afford expensive water treatment facilities. The less we have to treat the water, the better. And what's good for the fish is good for humans. What's good for fish is good for us. Less water treatment, etc. But you know, fish, you're going to have some seriously contaminated stormwater runoff to deal with, not to mention sewage overflow. Stormwater runoff and sewage? Do you know what that will cost? So how much are you actually worth? Pardon me? Well, you say you're important for tourism and such. How important? Some things you can't put a price tag on. How much is it worth to have pristine rivers, an untouched landscape, wild spaces where you can commune with nature? Way too much for my liking. I'm another living being. Isn't that worth something? Don't I have a place here as well? They are good eating. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, fish. <laughs> Decision makers are trying to decide at this time if they should allocate some resources to protect the fishery. Young fish called fry are often washed from the stream and stranded on land as the floodwater recedes. By alternating vegetation along the riverbank, they hope to safeguard the future of the vibrant trout and salmon fishery, an important part of tourism in the area. So now you have to choose between option A, to give resources to volunteers to rescue stranded fish from pools for 15 balls. Option B, to riprap the riverbank to protect fish habitat for 30 balls. Or option C, to remediate fish habitat post-flood for 40 balls. Please choose now. All right, thank you for your decision. They chose option A to rescue stranded fish from pools for 15 balls. So next up, we have the golf course. Well, we're located on our First Nation and we're a major economic driver for our people here. First Nation? Yep. It's kept a lot of our people out of poverty. Look, I feel for you. I really do. But a golf course is a luxury. By definition, you are more than what is essential. But we provide jobs. Jobs that are scarce in our region. And uh, have a cabin on your resort land. Don't you have insurance? <laughs> There's no insurance for this. And even if they did have it, if there are any delays in rebuilding, our clients will go elsewhere. Losing those jobs would have huge social costs for us. There's huge social costs everywhere. Yes, but we don't have the resources to recover as quickly as you do. We have to deal with the federal government for everything. Don't get me started on the feds. <laughs> it took us years to get the feds on side to develop this land and then to entice investors. Rebuilding will take years. We'd have to sacrifice funds from housing and education in order to rebuild the golf course or abandon it altogether. Yeah, but you're a golf course. There are thousands of people living in the low-lying hey, areas. Hey, wait your turn. Do you use a lot of fertilizer? That grass doesn't get that thick and green on its own. Darn it, there's that algae again. Wait, you're saying don't flood them because of fertilizer runoff? I can't say it enough. Everything affects you, doesn't it? If you lived in the water, you'd feel the same way. Hey, it's my turn, all right. We're doing our best with what we got. Don't make it harder, please. Thank you, golf course. <laughs> Owners of the River Shore Golf Course are looking to protect their 18th hole and the foundation of their clubhouse by constructing a barrier. In an, they hope their effort will save cabins downstream of the clubhouse by pushing water around the barrier and ideally onto the other side of the river. So you have to choose between option A, a tiger dam for 20 balls, Option B, a rapid deployment flood wall for 30 balls. Or option C, to construct a levee for 40 balls. Please choose now. Thank there you. you are. 
Thank you for your decision. They chose option B to give a rapid deployment flood wall to the golf course. <laughs> Meanwhile, managers at the water treatment plant are struggling with their own resourcing. Water treatment plant, you're up. Like, really? I really need to explain why I shouldn't get flooded. Everyone else has to do it. I provide clean drinking water to thousands of people, and I'm responsible for treating the wastewater before it re-enters the surrounding waterways. If any of those wastewater lagoons overflow, we'll literally be up- Don't say it. Just saying we can't take a hit on this. We must keep operating without any more stress to our system. Couldn't you tell your customers to use less water during a flood to alleviate stress? And we could provide bottled water. Most of the water you provide goes, t goes towards flushing toilets and showers. If any of our reservoirs get contaminated, people could get seriously ill. Not to mention the overwhelming cost of flushing out all the pipes afterwards. Oh, great. On top of industrial waste and fertilizer and pharmaceuticals in the water, I have to deal with human waste? Well, we can prevent a lot of that, but we can't take on more than is optimal. If we do, we don't know what the consequences could be. We'd have to shut down entire systems just to be safe. Oh man, you don't have to tell me how people will react if they get cut off from their water. Well, we have gotten spoiled. We all expect clean water at our fingertips at all times. Very few countries in the world have this kind of wealth of water. Which is why it should be handed over to the private sector. It's a viable resource that is ripe for the wealth making opportunities. And people would be less wasteful if they paid the real cost for their water. That's insane. People don't get free gas. Because of that, we literally drive the economy. Water would be another economic driver. Maybe. But that's an argument for another day. As it stands, we're just too essential to risk getting anything more than optimal. Is that it? That's it. Thank you, water treatment plant. <laughs> Despite fervent opposition from golf course owners, the water treatment plant is seeking an injunction to stop the construction of the rapid deployment flood wall. Furthermore, they are also looking to construct a large berm, which may have a backwater effect, forcing water higher in upstream areas. Plus, if the structure fails, it could be very bad news for those living downstream, including the community of Prairie Town, who is reaching out for the community's support. So, you have to choose between option A, a rapid deployment flood wall for 20 balls, option B, a berm for 40 balls, or option C, and I'm sure Oilfield doesn't like this one, to divert the water onto the golf course resort's luxury cabins that line the 18th hole for 50 balls. Please choose now. Thank you for your decision. They chose to go with option B, a berm for 40 balls. Next up, we have Prairie Town. We are home to 2,000 families. Where it gets flooded a lot. Hard working families. Again, where it gets flooded a lot. Yes, I know. We've lived here nearly 100 years, and yes, we've endured floods, but those floods are nothing like this one. Speaking as someone who's been here a while, I have to say that a catastrophic flood is inevitable. You think you don't, we don't know that? We've seen this happen the past 20 years, and we've raised concerns about their flood plans and flood mitigation, but no one listens. What are your evacuation plans? You see, that's what everybody expects out of us. It's like our property isn't worth as much because we're not in a big city, that our homes aren't as dear to us. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Oh, so you're quoting Spock now? He wouldn't find it so logical that we dig poison out of the ground and leave it lying around. We use lagoons that are waterproof and prevent leaching into the ground. Yeah, but they're open-topped. And because of that, you're holding the rest of us hostage because of your toxicity. We can't help but feel expendable in all this. Look, no one is saying you're expendable, but the water has to go somewhere. And if we can protect the drinking water in the city, well... Well, what are you saying? You're making it sound like we're expendable. You were thinking it with the others. Don't tell us you weren't. You're just a golf course. You're just a town. There are other towns I'm sure we won't miss one. Where you're living is really good for agriculture. Maybe you could repurpose your homes for that. If not now, then sometime in the near future. 
This won't be the last flood. We should build more dams, diversions, and spillways. That would provide better management in droughts and floods so we don't have to deal with this again. Sounds like you're wanting more governance. At least more governance. Some sort of understanding that allows us to have a strategy instead of crisis management. But it is a crisis. And now you people have to decide between option A, a round bale flood barrier for the central business district for 30 balls, or option B, a berm for the highest value homes for 40 balls. Or option C, a rapid deployment flood wall for the whole town for 90 balls. It's a typo. We're all human here, except fish, but we like fish too. Please choose now. Alrighty, thank you for your decision. They have chosen to build a round bale flood barrier for the central business district for 30 balls. This is good for the town, but the pushing of water around the town has meant that there's most likely going to be a flooding of an oil and gas field downstream. Good. Oil and gas field, you're up. This is going to be easy. Jobs. That's it? Well, you don't want to be known as a job killer, do you? Look, everyone will have to carry a little extra water. I'm the major economic driver in this region. That means I employ families. I said it, families. The men and women who work on our sites make a lot of money. And they spend that money on homes and cars. Lose me, you lose them. Yeah, but you also pollute the land and water. Not to mention, scientists have proven that your industry is responsible for rapid climate change. We're building well. I'm sure we can deal with a little wonky weather now and then. <laughs> wonky weather? Let's not get all boo-hoo-y about this. We'll deal. We'll adapt. That's what us humans are good at. That's what separates us from the lesser animals, like the fish. Hey! We can adapt faster. An adaptation will mean more jobs. It's win-win. How many of these events do you expect us to deal with? Does it matter? If we cut back on government strangulations and let the market decide for us, we'll react swifter and swifter. A business-like approach is the most effective way to deal with any crisis. You can't breathe money. You can buy good air with it. We've already bottled water. You don't think bottled air isn't next? Get now. Get in while the getting's good. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. It's economics. The more you make people need things, the more jobs you create making the things people need. But you won't really lose any equipment, will you? Drilling equipment is fairly resilient. Well, yeah. But we're losing thousands of dollars every day. It does nothing. But you also don't want that crude oil in our flood pits overflowing either. If that gets into the topsoil... Or the rivers... Then I have to deal with it in order to make it safe for people to drink or wash in. And that gets expensive and time-consuming. Then we have a whole mess of other problems. So, yeah. You don't want us getting too much extra water. We care about our grandchildren and the environment as much as the next guy. Ha! But we need the money oil and gas make for things like schools and hospitals. And besides, who didn't use oil to get here today? When this is done, can we look at how to make your industry cleaner? Job killer. Thank you, oil and gas field. Now, the river has begun to rise over its banks and inundate oil and gas wells. Teams of workers are working around the clock amidst the torrent to protect the wells from flooding. If the wells are damaged, it's very likely that those, that oil will end up in the river. So, you have to choose between option A, sandbags for 40 balls, option B, sandbags and pumps for each well for 80 balls, or option C, to do nothing and hope for the best for zero balls. Please choose now. Thank you for your decision. You've chosen to give sandbags to the oil field. At this time, we'd like to thank our representatives for participating in the Flood Management Challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson.
Thank you. Now, the community of the River Delta is looking for the populace of support at this time to help protect them from the flood. The good news is that the government has decided to match whatever donations are given to the Delta on behalf of the Delta. So please decide now. You have option A, to increase the height of existing levees for 60 balls, or option B, to evacuate the community for 90 balls. Please choose now. Perfect. How many have you got there? We have 45, and thus the government will match to give us our 90. Oh, Thank you for your decision. At this time, I would like to thank everyone for their participation in the Flood Management Challenge. Results will be given at the end of the show. Once again, thank you. Interesting. We still need to make a policy. We were supposed to do something about a drought and then this flood hit us. Don't well, say climate change. Come on, Dirk. We'll need to come up with both now. Uh. Oh, it's Annette. Hello? Bill, my friend, I got your message. What can I do for you? Annette, are you all right? We were worried about you. Had to get our cattle up onto higher ground. They're releasing a lot of water in anticipation of this flood. Both dams are just letting lots of water go. It was all hands on deck when that happened. Made it a right mess down here. Water's still rising. We managed to evacuate everyone who was in the way. We're dry and safe for now. She's safe. Oh. Good. Put her on speaker so we all can hear. Annette, we need your help. The government wants us to come up with a drought management plan. <laughs> You've heard the news, right? This keeps up only the plan for Noah's Ark. But we have teeth now, Annette. We can come up with some honest-to-goodness rules that people must follow, not just recommendations like before. Typical government, making laws about droughts in the middle of a flood. We don't need a drought management plan or a plan for a flood. We need a plan for water security. My ancestors were good at predicting floods and droughts. We can make plans on where to live, hunt, and gather on how the animals acted and how certain plants grew. But now we can't make those predictions and preparations anymore because of those dams. The dams are ruining our ability to predict anything. And we didn't have to make any laws or regulations, right? Because we weren't stupid enough to get into a fight with Mother Nature. No one should need to be told they have to move when a flood's coming. It's just good sense. And. <laughs> We helped each other out, right? It wasn't every person for themselves. Why can't we all just do that? I mean, do we really need a regulation to make sure people help each other out? No, Annette, we shouldn't need regulations for that. And another thing, everything you do upstream affects us. We have no control of that. We just have to deal. It gets pretty hairy for us sometimes. Would it be too much to ask that you remember everyone downstream? We'll keep that in mind. Okay, hope that helps. I gotta run and fill some sandbags. Stay dry, my friends. I feel kind of bad that we're in here doing nothing when she's out there doing something. I wonder how much they paid for those sandbags. Uh, people, it's coming down pretty hard out there. I think we should move this meeting or postpone it. Hey, we can't let this chance slip through our fingers. We should at least come up with the proposal. Well, I move we make it quick. I second that. All right, proposals, whatever comes to mind, first thing. Rainbow, go. Uh, uh, uh what, what Annette said, water security. We could allocate water in such a way that water is available for priority water groups as identified by the public within the river basin. 
keeping in mind that there is not an infinite source of water, and if there was, not every user would be able to draw from the source. Good one. Rainbow. Um. We need a policy that ensures safe, reliable, and resilient water supply for social, environment, and economic needs. Good. Rainbow. The supply is limited, so get used to it. It was my turn. What were you going to say? Um. Guys, come on. We don't have much time. I'm thinking. All right. Mine is sufficient water for population growth, economic growth, and environmental protection throughout the watershed for the next 50 years with 10-year review periods. Or we could just do what Annette said and just help each other out. Rainbow, please. Okay. Maintaining the long-term health and sustainability of water in quantity and quality for society, wildlife, and the environment. There. Was that so hard? Now let's get out of here. Meeting adjourned. Uh. Dirk. Uh.